All right, welcome back to the show. You just heard Eduardo Rodriguez and Mike Hazen at the D-backs press conference. Pretty exciting addition, and boy, the timing. They couldn't have done this any better for us. Mike Hazen now is joining us on the Arizona Sports Line. D-backs general manager, Mike, uh, thank you so much for the time. I, you know, uh, multiple times on this show over the last couple months, you've told us you wanted a starting pitcher. I would say you got a pretty good one. How did this, uh, how did this come about? Yeah, we uh, we're, 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 we feel pretty fortunate that we were able to get uh, Eduardo done. Um, adding to our rotation was certainly a priority throughout the season and now into into the off season for next year's club. Um, you know, look, the, the 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 negotiation was was fine. We met with him for a few hours at the winter meetings, and you know, we, I know he was actively negotiating with uh, with other teams. And um, you know, we we were we were fortunate that he that he chose to to come here. We feel like he's going to be a staple in our rotation for the next few years. We wanted to add to Merrill and Zach, and and obviously the group of young kids underneath that. Um, I think it helps all of those things. Mike, you know, I loved your candor when you were asked about him choosing to come play here. And you, right, the first thing you said was, hey, let's, let's not forget, there's a there's a monetary component to all this in terms of being able to sign these guys. So uh, we appreciate your honesty on that one. But having said that, the first thing Rodriguez mentioned about coming to Arizona was the whole spring training is here. Deal, you don't have to move around. Uh, the World Series now that you guys can talk to potential free agents or free agents about that. And they, they, they know you guys have just uh, been to the World Series. So how much of those components are are available to you and effective for you guys when you when you make a pitch beyond the monetary pitch? Yeah, no, I I, I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I, you get asked that question a lot about you know why they chose here, and it's like, hey, this, there's a business side of this thing first, right? Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, these guys are trying to that's their career. So uh, anyway, um, I, but I do think the secondary pieces matter. It. Uh, we've always said this, we, we should have an advantage over a lot of other clubs, if not almost all other clubs. And the fact that we are one of the clubs, there's only a couple of them that, that have spring training and the regular season in the, in the, in the same city. And, and we should, we should be able to leverage that. Now I will say that that the leverage to that advantage only goes so far. I mean, I think the dollar amounts have to be within shouting distance of other offers right. for for a free agent to make that probably like the the uh, big piece of why they're making a decision uh, we don't delude ourselves into thinking that's the only reason that a, a free agent's going to choose to come here um and, and because the financial component has to be there i do think if things get close if things are even i i think it's a big deal frankly like anyone that has children has has a family and we have one of the state of the art spring training facilities and it's a it's a great place to live it's a great place to have a young family i think that matters and and i think it, we've heard that quite a bit and then the world series piece to it definitely made an impact when we were meeting not just with eduardo but with other free agents you know we heard that repeatedly it's not a surprise that players got to watch us for 30 days and you know when you're on the west coast especially with the east coast clubs i don't know how much time these guys spend you know um watching our games because they've just played or whatever i think when you're in the playoffs when you're in the playoffs you get you get front row seat to our team and and i think that's what happened in some of these cases as well yeah. We're talking to Mike Hayes, and, you know, Mike, obviously Eduardo's uh, credentials speak for themselves as to why you guys would want him, but but how important was it to you that he's a lefty too and you can put that in the rotation? You know, that actually isn't that big of a difference to me. It wasn't really something that we focused in on. I think – so I go back and forth on this. Sometimes I feel like, you know, if you're facing a team and you're throwing three righties at them and they have a bunch of lefty mashers – right-handed hitters that are lefty mashers on their team, you kind of keep them on the bench for three straight days when you're facing them. So sometimes I wonder if having, you know, all righties really neutralizes some of the better right-handed lineups in baseball. And then, you know, certainly there are lefties that, that struggle with left-handed pitching. And, and so their neutralization could go on the other side. So it's kind of specific. It's sort of randomly specific as to where the advantage might be in any three game series. So I, I try not to focus too much on the handedness. I don't know that it matters a lot. Um, I, I like having a diversity of looks in, in some ways. I think that matters more in the bullpen than it does in the rotation. Um, but, uh, you know, other than that, we, we, the quality of the pitcher is what we were looking for first. Mike, real quick, two-part question. Uh, how, long, mm-hmm. how long ago did you have him 
figuratively, if, if not literally circled on your big board of players in your office? I mean, I know you can't talk to these guys until it's legal to do so, but how long has this guy been on your radar in terms of, we, we know he's going to be a free agent. Let's, let's, let's see if we can go out and get him. And he also said in the press conference, he knows how to pitch. Can you expound on that? Yeah. So, so um, one where we, we, you know, we're developing that list throughout October, September, October, as we're getting our final scouting looks at the end of the regular season, wherever these guys might be. So we're always building those prep lists of guys that we're going to go after when free agency starts. And then, and then once free agency starts, you just never know where it's going to take you. You don't, you don't know where the top of the market's going to go. You don't know, really know where the middle of the market or the bottom of the market's going to go. So you just have to throw a lot of lines out there and, and express interest and start having conversations and get to the point where you start making offers and see if you're in the same, you know, if you're in the same zip code. And, and so that, that's kind of how that comes down to it. Um, you know, I, I think to the second part of your question, you know, looking at Merrill and, and Zach, like they all have good stuff. Same with Eduardo. Like I think what makes those guys so good is their ability to command multiple pitches and it's not just about blowing fastballs by guys, right? It's it's they can put their secondary stuff where they need to as well. And I think you can fit into that mold too. I think we can help those pitchers, given the guys that we have with our pitching infrastructure, our coaches and our strategists that can help these guys sort of map out a game plan to really enhance their arsenal. And that's why we felt like it was a good fit. We're talking to Mike Hayes and Mike, you know, obviously have a couple players that were a big part of the team last year that aren't signed yet by anybody. I mean, certainly I, I'm, I'm sure you're still looking at other players around the league. There's rumors there. What in your mind is, is, is next on the agenda? I think we're kind of focusing on the offensive side of things. We're never going to shut off the pitching um, conversations because you, everybody needs so many pitchers to get through a season. So we're still going to be engaged on that side. But I think, I think the bat enhancing the lineup um, is probably still, moving a little bit more to the forefront of our attention right now and something that we're going to look to address uh, as we keep going forward. Mike, you, you talked about the division there at the end. I know you didn't want to get into specifics about the, the young man the Dodgers just signed, but one thing that you said that caught my ear was it's going to make us better playing in a division like this. What is that? How, how, how do you get better in a division like this? And, and, and really, what do you mean by that? So you, 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 going through the playoffs is, 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 is incredibly difficult. I mean, the things that have to go right for you, the way you have to play, the, the breaks you have to create, the way the, the, every little detail matters. Every mistake costs you, um, given that the other team is prepping for you in a way that they can't really do it during the regular season. I, I think playing in a division that's extremely tough night after night forces a level of focus. Like, there, there's no – series in our division that you walk into where you feel like <clears throat> all right we're just going to roll the bats and balls out there and win the game like that's not going to happen in this division i think that takes a that, that sharpens our focus and when it comes to the playoffs you have to have that every night if you're going to be successful and you know i i thought our players did an incredible job this year and i don't you know everyone made a big deal of 184 games and uh, yeah, there was a lot of losses that went into that 84 win season. And there were a lot of tough losses, a lot of bullpen losses, a lot of, you know, struggles. We went through that month and a half offensively. I feel like it makes you better. It gives you a better chance to be ready to compete when it matters the most. And if the take, the one takeaway that I have from the season, as much as, you know, people want to talk about how many games we won relative to others, that's fine. And that's fair over that 162. But we played better when it mattered the most, almost better than anybody else and that's what it takes to win some playoffs i mean i've been on other playoff teams that were maybe even better uh regular season teams um you you still have to bring that or or you're not going to be successful in the playoffs and so that's what i meant by that i feel like it helps us uh, once once you if you can get get through the grind and get into october Mike, we, we saw during the, the second half of the season, certainly during the playoffs, how much having a set bullpen helped you guys on the field. How much is it helping you to already kind of have that mostly taken care of now in the off season? Yeah, it's helping us focus on other areas of need without having to divide our attention and our resources in a way that we have had to in the past, right? Putting, you know, dealing with the, the big building blocks of a team, the, the, the lineup and the position and the, and the starting pitching group, you know, you always takes a lot of your attention. Um, I think when when you have to when you're when you're focused on the bullpen too, it, it just it just 
you know, it, it, it waters it down a little bit, the way that you're able to, where are you going to divide your resources? Where are you going to spend your money? Where are you going to spend your trade, you know, assets or, 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 or minor league players to go get, to go get major league relievers. Um, not having, we're going to address the bullpen and add to the bullpen at some point, not having to have that be the number one thing we have to go do, which has been one of the main things we've had to go do the last few years, I think has helped at least sharpen our ability to, to, you know, um, laser in on bigger, bigger priorities. Well, Mike, big day for you guys. Thank you so much for the time. Good luck this off season. All right. All right, guys. Thanks, Thanks Mike. Thanks a lot. That's Mike Hazen joining us right there on the Arizona sports line. Thanks for watching Wolf and Luke tap to see more and click the button in the middle to subscribe to Arizona sports.